Good afternoon, class. So today, hopefully, we'll get to the end of uh, bonding and structure. So we're going to do the final type of bonding, which is metallic bonding. So, the, so that's a follow on from ionic and covalent bonding. Uh, this is the shortest bit. Um, and well, it, it can be confusing enough. So we'll spend some time practicing the various parts of this. So the first thing we're going to look at is bonding. Now, on your notes in the first page, um, you'll see a, a, a diagram of bonding. Now, we'll come back to this. You'll have to draw a few more of these. Um, I suggest you put some onto your notes after. Uh, practice using the whiteboards, but uh, before you do anything in your notes. OK, so I'm going to start playing you a video first, and then we'll come back to what's on the first page and talk about it. So I'm going to go to my free science lessons person. Let him explain it to you. Share. Hi and welcome back to freesciencelessons.co.uk. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe the features of metallic bonding. You should then be able to describe and explain the properties of pure metals and alloys. Metals are critically important in chemistry. I'm showing you here a gold bar, which is essentially pure gold, and also a guitar string, which is an alloy. And we'll be looking at what's meant by an alloy later in this video. So let's start by taking a closer look at metals. In the previous videos, we've seen that atoms become stable by gaining a full outer energy level. When a metal atom reacts with a non-metal atom, we see ionic bonding. However, when two non-metal atoms react, we've got covalent bonding. So let's take a look at bonding in metals. Metals consist of a giant structure of atoms arranged in regular layers, and I'm showing you that here. In a metal, the electrons in the outer energy level of each atom are delocalized. So let's take a look at what that means. Here I'm showing you atoms of the metal lithium. Lithium atoms have got three protons in their nucleus and three electrons in their energy levels. Now the key fact is that in metals, the outer electrons are not attached to any individual atom, so they're free to move. Scientists call these delocalized electrons, and I'm showing you these here. Scientists call this a sea of delocalized electrons, and it's often shown like this. Now, because each metal atom has lost its outer electrons, we now refer to them as metal ions. But remember that this is not ionic bonding, this is metallic bonding. So the key fact is that we have a strong electrostatic attraction between the sea of delocalized negative electrons and the positive ions. Remember that an electrostatic attraction is an attraction between a positive object and a negative object. Scientists call the electrostatic attractions in metals a metallic bond, and metallic bonds are strong. Grammarly helps make your writing clear and concise, no matter where you Okay, so sorry about that. I did not mean to close that. I'm going to have to open it up again in a minute. Um, so back to the notes, right? So while I find, so have a look at what it says. There are a few key ideas here that you need to make sure you get a hold of. So first thing to note is that metallic bonding applies to every metal. And just the elements, we're talking about metal elements here. So metals actually don't form bonds as such with other metals. You can mix them with other metals to form alloys, but they don't form bonds, right? There's no electron sharing or transfer. So just be aware, we are looking, if you look at your periodic table, right, you will see, and I'll show you this in a minute, every single metal will have the same type of bonding and the same diagram for all of them. So this is one of the diagrams that we have. I put this one in your notes, but we're gonna practice a couple of others just so you're aware of the what sort of thing to look for. Now, metallic bonding is this, right? It is the attraction, and as I said in the video, it's the electrostatic attraction between the positive ions and delocalized electrons. It's 
skip that here. Okay, so you need to know that. So just as ionic bonding was electrostatic attraction between oppositely charged ions, metallic bonding is electrostatic attraction between positive ions and delocalized electrons. So positive ions have a different name. Can you remember what you call positive ions? So cations, if you remember that, and delocalized electrons are sometimes called free electrons. Now, so that's what holds the whole structure together. But what is the structure, right? The structure of a metal is a regular lattice now of metal of metal cations surrounded by a sea of delocalized electrons. So learn that that is the structure of a metal, and the bonding is what holds it all together. So that's the attractions between the positive ions and delocalized electrons. Now, we're going to um, draw some diagrams of this, first of all, right? So um, I'm going to get you to, if you have your whiteboards handy, I'm going to get you to draw some diagrams. I'm just going to switch over to the visualizer now. Okay, so I'm showing you here the periodic table, and I just want you to make to be very aware that every single metal, if you're asked to draw a diagram of any metal structure, you are going to, it could be the same diagram applies to all of these. Now, the mistake people, well, I'll talk about the mistake people make in, in a bit. Okay, so let's try and see if you can apply the diagram in your notes to a diagram of, of a, a particular metal. So draw, draw a diagram to show the bonding and structure in, and I'm just going to pick any random metal because frankly it doesn't, they're all going to be the same. Let's, let's choose something just strange, molybdenum, here it is. I have to spell this. Malib. Okay. So, what is the structure of molybdenum? So, remember, the first thing is we've got layers of ions, metal ions, in a lattice. Now, how we represent that is what I suggest you do is it's like the diagram of a solid that you did at key stage three. If you remember those, right? And you know that the particles are all regularly arranged close together. OK, so it's like that. It's very like that diagram, except this time we're going to show that these circles represent cations and we're going to put a plus in the middle of them to show they're positively charged. Now, at GCSE, it doesn't really matter what the actual positive charge is because, you know, different metals will lose different numbers of electrons and put. Uh, but we're just all you have to show is that they are positively charged. Another thing to note is you will always cover your back very well by labeling diagrams so if your diagram is just you know the, in the stress of the exam or whatever it looks a bit liquidy right if it's just not great label it right so cations metal ions in regular layers because if you have that if you have a good labeling system then you're you have a bit of there's a bit of forgiveness from the examiner right in terms of your actual drawing if you make a mistake right so we've metal ions in regular layers and as i say draw three layers you can have a four three four or five four five sort of combination as long as it's very obvious that they are in regular layers okay the next thing now we're going to put in the delocalized electrons and there are a number of ways of representing this so i'm going to i'm going to show you all of them so in your in your notes you have these dots and don't worry about how many you have just kind of mix them in between your metal cations because the idea is that they're free to move right that they're just roaming around so again label them so you say these are delocalized electrons sometimes called a sea of delocalized electrons OK, so the um, delocalized electrons, OK, 
and C of, I mean, it's not necessary to mention that as long as you have labeled them, the C of delocalized electrons. Okay, so the next, so, and then, so that is the structure. Now, what about the bonding? That actually doesn't show you the bonding. That's not telling you anything about the bonding. So you need to actually write that. The bonding part of this is the attraction or electrostatic attraction. The electrostatic attraction between just put cations, metal ions or cations, and the delocalized electrons. Okay, so there's the structure of them, right? So I'll move this up a bit so you can see the whole board. Okay, now, um, I want you to do exactly the same thing, right? To, uh, let's pick another metal. Let's do something more that you've heard of, magnesium. I want you to draw a diagram to, and ex right, to show the bonding and structure in the molybdenum. And I'm going to rub this out. Well, I'm not I'm going to reuse it. So I want you to draw a diagram. To show the bonding and structure in magnesium. Okay, so if you could do that now, please. Give me a couple of minutes. Okay, so um, maybe Mrs. Carraher will pause if you need more time, because I'm going to do the answer now. So just if uh, just if you need more time, put your hand up, and other, and then Mrs. Carraher can pause this. But otherwise, I'm just going to talk on. Okay, so magnesium. So I can just switch my diagram and everything I've written and drawn from molybdenum, and I can just change this to magnesium because every metal will have exactly the same diagram for bonding and structure now please don't be confused between drawing the diagram for the bonding and structure in a particular metal and a diagram of an atom of that metal okay so the at diagram of an atom would be your um magnesium with electrons and all that right that's not the same as the diagram for a metal Okay, that's just for a single atom. The rest of it. Um, not, this is not the diagram for the metallic bonding and structure. So just if it's talking about bonding or structure of a metal, this is what you want. If it's talking about the diagram of an atom, that's what you want. Okay, so try another one. How about uh, the structure and bonding in, let's pick something really strange. Dubnium, it's element number 105. Actually, no, because I don't think there's enough of it to actually form any quantity. What about tungsten? Tungsten. So I want you to do a uh, draw a diagram of the bonding and structure in tungsten. Which has strangely has the symbol W. I think it's because it's a German. German uh, derived name originally. 
Okay, so if you pause at this point, uh, if you pause the video, please, and have a go at drawing the diagram of tungsten. And then if you let Mrs. Carher know whenever you are ready to see the answer. So again, we've got this exactly the same diagram now. So um, if you look at the revision book, this is why I haven't taken the diagram from the revision book for your notes. And um, they actually have given a sodium, right? And I just think it's much easier not to even worry about which metal it is. As long as you have this diagram, you will get full marks in the exam. You do not need to identify which metal um, cation you're talking about, just identify it. If you wanted to, you could say metal ions, you could put tungsten ions or magnesium ions or something like that, whatever you want, if you want in the labeling. But I really would just learn the one diagram. The only thing I would say is that occasionally you will see, now you can just draw dots, but you will see different ways of representing the delocalized electrons. Uh, so I'm going to actually just show you that. So you might see different ways and they all mean exactly the same thing. So I'm going to just do a couple more diagrams just to illustrate different ways of representing the delocalized electrons, just so you're aware of what, what you could see. Okay, so one way, so as I say, you will always have the metal cations. And as I say, most diagrams just show a positive charge in the middle, just to show it's a cation, not a proton, right? This represents cations, not protons, right? And another way, electrons could be represented with a minus. Okay, or you can sometimes see, it's hard to fit it in, E minus. You can see that's probably the hardest one to do. And sometimes you'll see that the cations are a bit separated out just really to fit the E minuses in, but that's okay as long as you have regular layers, okay? So other formats for representing delocalized electrons should make a note of that. So it might appear in the exam that you're given a diagram, as I say, how you draw them, but hopefully you can see that all three, right, so that original one, the one uh, sorry, I rubbed out some of the electrons, where you have electrons, is the delocalized electrons as dots, or you have them as minuses, or you have them as E minuses, label it. If you label that, then you really, it doesn't, you know, the format that you use is not important. Okay, so what I want you to do now is have a look at uh, the questions to try and draw, right, you've done a few of these. Uh, this bit of revision here, so I want you to do question one, right, I should, you should include that in your notes. You should be confident at this stage. If not, practice on a whiteboard and check. I'll be doing the answers in a moment. Um, and you I also want you, this is a little bit of revision, right, just to make sure that you can determine when you have a particular type of bond because you need to be able to identify from the elements involved. If you could complete question two, I'm just going over to the other side. And then um, part three, question three as well. OK, so if you could pause the video and do that now. Thank you. And say, let Mrs. Carher know when you're done. Okay, so doing a diagram of a metal, this time I've chosen to give the electrons a minus. 
doesn't matter how many you have, just a fair few, okay? So they're not specifying what metal it is. Okay, so we have to use certain terms. So metal ions, you can label both two layers. Uh, delocalized electrons, Uh, in la in layers. Okay, so I put that in as well. Uh, it's a giant metallic structure, we could call it, although metallic structure is enough for CCA, for your exam board. I just point down to that. Okay. The uh, electrostatic attraction between ions and delocalized electrons, I would just put as bonding. Is the electrostatic attraction. <laughs> between uh, ions and delocalized electrons. Uh -huh. Okay, so it's the same. It'll be all the same, right? Um, okay, next one. Question two. Okay, so carbon and carbon, right? Two non-metals, that'll be covalent. Oxygen and lithium, that's a non-metal metal, so that'll be ionic. Silver and fluorine, that's a metal, non-metal, so that's going to be ionic. Magnesium and chlorine, metal, non-metal, ionic. Magnesium and calcium, two metals, you can only get an alloy. They won't form a bond. Um, beryllium and nitrogen, that's a, beryllium is a metal, non-metal, that'll be ionic. Phosphorus and oxygen, two non-metals, that would be covalent. So that's just the bonding, the structure we can't, we're not asked for. Okay, just the bonding. And last question, and then I'm going to spend a second to explain how the particles are held together in a metal. Electrostatic attraction. Between the metal ions or cations and delocalized electrons. Okay, so I'm um, gonna have to send a second video. I don't know if you can hear my phone beeping away there.